I had to get the black stuff off my hands. On today's episode of Geek Beat, the biggest hack in history, buttons make a comeback, plus your fake questions answered. I'm John P, and the train wreck starts now. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by lynda.com. Before I jump into the geek minutia of today's stellar show, I just want to remind you that today is the last show where I can remind you that Sunday is the deadline to get your Geek Beat shirts. These babies right here. Our Geek Plus patrons, that's the $25 or higher level, will be getting these by default because, well, they're awesome. If you aren't a patron though, we're giving you one little chance to snag up some of these bad boys, but you're gonna have to jump on it now or miss the boat. Visit geekbeat.tv forward slash t-shirt dash orders and put in your order before midnight Sunday or that's it folks. Now, headlining today's show comes news from Cloudfla Cloudflare's, why is that hard to say? Cloudflare's CEO confirming the biggest distributed denial of service attack in internet history. On Monday, he tweeted about one of their confidential clients getting hit hard with a DDoS attack that utilized internet time servers to rain down a shower of traffic on one unsuspecting target. These sorts of attacks generally occur when hackers gain access to a whole host of zombie machines and then either point them all at a target or use them to spoof their target and request a bunch of data from other machines to have them send it to the one that they're posing as. Monday's attack was registering in the neighborhood of 400 gigabits per second. That is more bandwidth than all but the largest countries on Earth can even generate in total. So as Matthew Prince said, someone's got a big new cannon. It's the start of ugly things to come. Okay, here's a project I'm really looking forward to. It's called Pallet. And I think its co-founders, Calvin and Ashish, are right on the money with breaking out of the everything's gotta be digital mold because sometimes the world needs buttons. Pallet is a set of modular physical controls that you can place together and then attach to your Mac, PC, or Linux machine. You then assign commands to the buttons, knobs, and sliders which correspond to various software functions. For example, you could assign a slider to actually scroll the page up and down in a browser or zoom in and out in a photo editor, or you could assign a panic button so that when someone walks in the room, well, you get the picture. I love the idea, though I remain positively skeptical. The magic to this device is gonna be in the software interface that allows it to seamlessly integrate with the various operating systems. The engineers need to make it easy to program the functions and also very stable. And tackling that in three OS's simultaneously is gonna be hard for a small startup. I predict that if things go well for Pallet, we'll soon see cheaper control boards that lack the modularity, but trade a standard multi-controller layout for a much lower price. You know, speaking of fancy programming, at lynda.com you can learn how to code, create, and build Android applications in Java. From the foundations of object-oriented Java programming to using the Android API to create engaging mobile apps, you'll learn to develop apps for today's prop pop Blech! Popular desktop and mobile platforms. With Linda's library of thousands of training courses, you can learn how to build web apps with .NET, PHP, MySQL from scratch, or just improve your language skills with JavaScript, Ruby, C, C++, R, and many more. Who knew there were so many crazy languages to code in? Well, you would if you signed up for courses like Foundations of programming, up and running with Java apps, and building and monetizing game apps for Android. And best of all, if you sign up at lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you'll get a week absolutely free. So someone do us a favor and go study up on lynda.com, then build us a cool geekbeat Roku app. How about one that lets people download all the latest videos, read the latest posts, and when you're done with all that, how about a little Pac-Man style game where Callie is running around in amazing eating dots and John P. Ghosts are chasing her? That would be epic. Now is the time of the show where I answer your questions. 
Jason Amory over on Twitter asked, at John Pose, what portable hard drive do you think I should get for my Mac? I'm looking for something cheap, $40 to $65, but I want the most for my money. Jason, that answer was too boring, so instead, here's your new question. If you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Is this a trick question? I am an animal. Next question. If you could be a superhero, what would be your one superpower? The ability to avoid stupid questions like a boss. Next question. Tell me about the worst boss you ever had. Well, I own this company, so that's pretty bad. How would you design a spice rack for a blind person? I'm sorry, all I heard was rack. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? I'm sorry, all I heard was rack. Who is your celebrity crush? Linda Carter. All I heard was rack. Do you get used to being a celebrity? Eh, I was born this way. Next question. What's the weirdest thing a fan has ever done for you? Sent me a topless photo. And believe me, that guy needed a good waxing. Well, that's all the time we have today, but I guess we can try again next week if you tweet some really hard-hitting questions at John Pose. I'll read them out on the show and answer anything you need to know. Okay, you can also tweet tech questions at me and I might answer some of those too. I'm John P. Thanks for watching and stay classy, San Diego. I am very sorry for what just happened.